Good evening, everyone. My name is Joshua Gilliland. I'm the chair of the Sea Scout Marketing Committee. Thank you for joining us this evening for our first live demonstration on a webinar to discuss snorkeling. The present presenters tonight are Kathy Waitig and her son Jonah, who are in Lake Havasu, Arizona, and they will be putting their home swimming pool to good use. We're going to have a lot of fun with this presentation. Uh, we're also going to be streaming it to Facebook and YouTube as to test out some uh, capabilities for our live streaming and really appreciate everyone joining us tonight. I want to turn the show over to Kathy so she can take it away. Kathy, how are you doing? Well, I'm doing pretty well, I think. This is our first time uh, from the middle of the desert to talk about snorkeling. Uh, but I just wanted to say that, first of all, welcome to our first action webinar. And um, I'm here with my son who is out in the pool, um, which I'll show in a little while. It's blowing about 25 knots here. So I'm going to show you all the snorkeling equipment inside before we go outside. Um, I just want to tell you my son is an Eagle Scout and he holds the rank of Able, which I'm pretty proud of. And um, we're going to give you a demonstration of snorkeling which in scuba diving we call skin diving. So snorkeling is considered skin diving. Um, I've been diving, scuba diving for two thirds of my life and have been a dive instructor for half of my life. So maybe you guys can maybe think of how old I am at that point. Um, the one thing I do wanna make sure that everyone needs to make sure that, that they know the level of comfort their scouts have in the water. The reason why I say this, if you have a scout that's not very comfortable in the water, then you want to make sure they're in a snorkeling vest or in a uh, PFD, something so that that way that they're floating on the surface and they're thinking about the breathing and the looking in the water and not worrying about floating. Um, that I think is a kind of a, um, a good bit of advice to start if you've never done this with your ship. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about equipment first. After we get through all the equipment, we'll go outside and Jonah will then demonstrate the proper techniques of using all of this. So the way we're gonna start first, I'm gonna turn my camera around. I brought all the equipment inside. So let me do that. We'll do a little switcheroo. And we're gonna go over each piece of equipment. The most important piece of equipment on any scuba dive or snorkel or skin dive, whichever you wanna call it, is gonna be your masks. So I have an array of different kinds of masks different shapes and different sizes and different colors. The most important thing of any mask is fit and comfort. So if your mask doesn't fit you, then it will leak and you'll be miserable. So you want to get a mask that fits you properly. To put a mask on that fits you properly, you're going to put the mask on your face. I'm going to switch this around again if I can do that real quick. And You'll take a mask, put it on your face, inhale. If the mask stays on your face when you inhale, it's a good fitting mask. Make sure your hair is out of your, out of your face when you do that. Let me switch it back. So different shapes, different sizes. Again, it has to fit you correctly. Then what you need to do is, is make sure that your mask is clean. The, the worst thing for anyone is when you go in the water and your mask starts to fog. Fog is basically the condensation of the heat of your skin against the cold water outside the mask. So the way to prevent that, the first time you use a mask, you wanna use either like, like a toothpaste. And this is just regular toothpaste I get when I get my teeth clean and I keep it in my mask box, which you should always keep if you own your own mask. And so every about three months, you want to take some toothpaste, put it on the inside of the glass, rub it around, and then rinse it off and do that three times. What that does, it takes the, there's a film that cures on the glass from the silicone. So you need to be able to get, get that off. Once you get that off, then you're going to use these little mask drops. And mask drops come in all different um, varieties. This is called an anti-fog. You drop it in there, rinse, put it around, and then rinse your mask off and put it on your face. Then your mask shouldn't fog. 
because what will happen is that this will become a wetting agent and then any basically fog that you create will just drip down the inside of the mask. So that's kind of key. If you have a polycarbonate mask like this one, and those polycarbonate masks are really quite expensive, so we're talking about a $200 mask, you wouldn't want to use toothpaste on polycarbonate. So anytime these, all these tempered glass ones, toothpaste, polycarbonate, don't use, just read the manufacturer's directions on how to clean those. But you can always use antifog on any of these masks. Um, let's see. Most, again, mask is most important piece of gear. Now, the next thing that we're going to talk about, because we're going to talk about snorkeling or skin diving, is your snorkel. There's quite a few different kinds of snorkels. Let me move my little piece of paper here so we can talk about those. Snorkels started out as what we call a J snorkel. So this is, a, if this was straight, way back when, they would be J-shaped. Now this is considered a contour J snorkel. What that means is that the snorkel then contours around your head. By doing so, it gives you less, resist less resistance in the water because the top of the snorkel goes in the wake of your head when you're swimming along the surface. So there's less drag. Now we have two different snorkels here. We have both contour J snorkels. This one has a purge and this is a non-purge snorkel. So there's two different types of snorkels. Um, depending on your ease, a purge snorkel is easier to clear, meaning get the water out. So you, you swim down, you get a little water in there and either you have to blow it all out or if you have a purge, the water will, will settle in the bottom part, which is a little bit larger, and then you blow it out in the direction of least resistance, which would be off the bottom, okay? So this is a purge snorkel, and this is a non-purge snorkel. A non-purge snorkel, you have to come to the surface and blow to get the water out. There's two ways of clearing a snorkel. One is a displacement method, is when you do a, a surface dive and you come back up, as long as this is the lowest part and this is the highest part, so you're looking up to the surface of the water, you put a little breath into the snorkel, the water expands, um, the, the air expands as you ascend when you come to the surface and the water comes out. So it should be clear by the time you get to the surface. This is the most efficient way to clear a snorkel, but it takes a little bit more practice. This one, all you would do is you would blow a little bit on the way up, the water would go in the direction of least resistance, and then the snorkel will hopefully be cleared by when you get to the surface. Any extra water will sit in the little um, space in, in the bottom of the snorkel. Okay. The last thing I just want to talk about is fins. So there's two different types of fins. These are called slipper fins or closed heel fins. They come in different sizes. Most people would know them as small little kind of tiny fins. We don't use these for scuba diving, but I just want to show them to you. These are a pair of my scuba um, fins that you can wear for free diving or snorkeling. And these are a lot longer, but they also are uh, closed fins, uh, closed heeled, okay? So slipper fins. Um, those are good. There's the, the bad part of those is that Around here, when it's 125 degrees, you'd have to walk around barefoot. So that wouldn't be a good thing. Or if you're doing cold water diving, bare feet and it's 32 degrees outside wouldn't be a good thing. So what we all use is we use open heel fins, fins that have pockets. There's two different kinds. And with those, you'd wear a booty. And a lot of you guys, if you're just, if you're sailing or if you do um, paddle boarding, you might have a pair of these. And these are just neoprene booties that fit inside the pocket, like so. And then that way you have no, um, the neoprene will protect you from heat loss from the environment, like walking on hot sand or hot deck on a boat and it will protect you from the, envir the environment, heat loss, and from your gear. 
so you wouldn't have any chafing. Where this, a lot of times you get blisters from the top of the um, fin. All right, so those are the three pieces of gear and the extra thing with the booties that you would need to go snorkeling. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go outside to the swimming pool. It's windy out there, so I don't know how my sound's gonna be, but we're gonna um, check that out and see what Jonah's up to. Oh, look, Jonah's floating in the pool. Oh, and the wind's died down a little bit, so that's a good thing. Okay, so the first thing, oh, and the dog, the dog's extra. So, Jonah, the first thing I want you to do is show them how you would check your mask. First, you would take your mask, clean your hair out of your face. You're going to get a feedback loop. Okay, so he's going to turn his sound down on his. And we'll go for the sound on mine. You're going to take your mask, you're going to clean it out, get any dirt out of it, get your hair out of your face. Put your mask on your face. Where's the strap go? And the strap goes right on top of your head. Not up here, not down here, right here. Right above your ears. Okay. Oh. So how about how do you put a snorkel? The snorkel is gonna be on your left side. So your snorkel gets mounted one of a few ways. Uh, we have what's called snorkel keepers, which are, they almost look like dumbbells. They have a circle on either side and a strap in the middle to join them. That's what I'm using. There's other masks that come with clips on them that are designed to go around your snorkel. Anything really works, you could use a hair tie if you wanted to. Um, it goes on the left side, it'll fit right so that the snorkel tip goes right above your head. Okay, so the reason why your snorkel's on your left is because if you went scuba dive, your regulator will be coming from the right side. Jonah also has a wetsuit on. It's always important to have um, thermal protection. So again, the wetsuit, even though it's 120 degrees here on the desert, you'd still want to wear a wetsuit to protect you from the environment, heat loss, and from your gear. So those are the three important things why you would wear a wetsuit. And especially here, we have a lot of weeds in the water and that way it protects you from the weeds. So what I'm gonna have Jonah do is he's gonna just swim across the pool, do a turn and come back. So he's basically doing a flutter kick. He's going underneath the, our pool cleaner, which we didn't pull out. As he swims back, he's going under the water and then he's gonna blow since he ha has Oh, he does have one with a purge on it. So he blew it out and it came out the top. Okay, and he's back. Um, how about go up, out that way, come back and drop your left shoulder down and do a turn and clear your snorkel as you come back. These are some exercises I do when I do a scuba class. So we always start out with snorkeling and I have them swim back and forth with their snorkel. You want to make sure they look at a 45 degree angle. You don't want them to look straight down at the bottom of the pool because then they'll be drinking the pool. And you don't want to go looking straight ahead. You want to look at a 45 degree angle so you can look all the way around. This is an exercise that we do is have them drop their left shoulder and turn using their fins, not their hands, and blow gently as they go around and then they clear their snorkel. with it again. Yeah, why don't you do it one more time. So he's swimming underwater. He did a turn before he got to the top. Turn one more time. Turn one more time. Right here. Turn, no, turn right, do a turn right here. 
So you just swim and turn. In scuba diving, we never use our hands. So this is a good time for them to start practicing with good fin kicks. Um, go right here, let's do some fin kicks. Do a flutter kick first. So with flutter kicking, your knees are slightly bent, your toes are pretty much pointed, and you're using your fin blades, and your fin blades should stay under the water. And that's always a good thing to practice. That's how we, we really check the first time. Once you start going underwater, then there's other types of fin kicks we use, like dolphin kicks and frog kicks. That, I don't know if you can see different kinds of kicks that we use. Because if you get a, a cramp in your legs, the object is to just change your fin kick. The way to get rid of a, a leg cramp would be taking the fin blade towards you and gently pulling it towards you, stretching your calf. What else will we do when we how about some, some surface dives? There's two kinds of surface dives, a hand-first surface dive and a feet-first surface dive. A hand-first surface dive is when you're going forward, you bend at the hips, and you're going down piking with your legs out of the water. The weight of your legs out of the water will drive you forward and down. And then you touch the bottom or whatever object you're looking for and then come to the surface. A feet first surface dive, unfortunately our pool isn't deep enough, but it would be done like you would do a rescue in lifeguarding, where you're kicking your feet together, taking a breath, using your hands like a jumping jack coming out of the water. The weight of your body out of the water is the driving force that sends you down where you tuck and roll and then get your object. What else? Well, does anyone have any questions? Does anyone have any questions? Okay, I'm gonna walk inside for a second so I can, because I can't hear. Hopefully we still have a feed. Do we still have you? Yes, we do have a question. Okay. One is from a person who's going to sea base in a couple of weeks. Okay. They just bought a new mask and snorkel. And okay. it's, uh, they're looking for a tip on where can I find the fog drops or is there a common item substitute? For, I, I they're looking for a what? Uh, where can they find the fog drops? Oh. Or is there a common item substitute? Uh, yeah, you can use shampoo. But I would use a baby shampoo that wouldn't affect your eyes. Or the old tried and true method is spitting in your mask, but don't spit in well, other we don't, people's masks. And we don't spit in our masks right now because of COVID. The other question that just came in is, um, oh, this was the same question, so we've answered it live. So that's it on live questions so far. People might also be taking a moment to type them in. Okay. So no other questions yet. So it looks like that's all of the live questions that we've had. Uh, Kathy, how long does it normally take someone to learn how to snorkel? Oh, snorkeling, it's, it's just about how comfortable they are in the water. Um, I usually have my first scuba pool is snorkeling. So we do snorkeling um, in an hour, you know, because we go over gear in the classroom beforehand and then we go into the pool and um, most people have it within an hour. They, they are 
If you can snorkel, scuba diving's a breeze. And scuba diving is easier than snorkeling. What I tell people is that most people are afraid to scuba dive because they're fearful of snorkeling because they got water in their mouth or they got water in their face and they're afraid that they'll feel like that underwater and that's not the case at all. When scuba diving, you have um, a regular in your mouth that and it will always deliver you air so you don't have to worry about um, swallowing water. So um, snorkeling is, if you can master snorkeling, you can, you'll be a great diver. Fantastic. Another question that came in is, where would you take a ship to learn? And another related question, what is a good first snorkeling area to start? Um, a good snorkeling area to start would be somewhere where the water is clear. So then you can see the bottom. One thing that people need to know is also with the mask, everything looks closer and, and larger than normal. So don't get fearful when you see your first fish and you think it's the size of a whale. It's not. Um, so, and then scuba diving, any local dive shop can teach you to dive. Um, what, when I lived in Connecticut, we would train people in the winter to scuba dive. Uh, we do classroom pools and then we would go to Florida in the winter and do a short trip and do our training dives in, in clear water. Here in the desert, we have Lake Havasu, so I train them here, and then we go into the lake and, and dive. The visibility changes throughout the year since it's a lake, so right now the visibility is about 25 feet. So we go from 25 to 30 feet in May and June, and now it will start um, going progressively less visibility because of the, um, the growth in the water, because now all the, the grass is growing, and then the visibility gets, gets worse. And then when the water chills off, we have kind of hit and miss depending on what the visibility is like. So you can start in your own backyard and then go somewhere nice and warm. What else do you have? Another question is, and, and again, two came in and they're related. Uh, one is how much do I need to spend on gear and another is, what is a good cost for masks and fins? Uh, okay, so a class, depending on where you are, should run between $225 and $400. Now, I, when I tra train my ship, we always give them the Sea Scout good, good guys deal. That's a scuba class price, not a snorkeling class price. Yes, we're talking about scuba diving. Yeah. <laughs> that was Jonah. Um, so, uh, a good mask, if you're going to go and you think you're going to go into scuba, I, I make sure you get a good mask starting out. So a good mask, snorkel, booties, and fins run about $225. Excellent. Uh, another question is, uh, what swimming techniques or exercises should a scout practice in a pool for scuba or snorkeling? Swimming. The, the better off you are swimming and really using good technique with um, putting your face in the water, um, any kind of stroke, as long as your face is in the water and then you're coming up and taking a breath, putting your face back in the water, taking uh, a breath. And the reason is, is that you have the mimetic reflex is where we've learned to hold our breath as, as infants. And this is where uh, dolphins and whales, how they can take a breath and go under for long periods of time. Um, and it's in your face. So if you can put your face flat in the water um, and, and feel comfortable, then you're going to be an awesome scuba diver. And that's the first thing I check with, with people. We do the um, dead man's float um, in our first pool to see if I'm going to have a problem with someone not being able to take a mask off and put it back on their face underwater. Excellent. Well, that's the last question that we have. Uh, if anyone wants to ask more, they can uh, send an email to marketing at cscout.org. And, we're and happy what, to what I also more. want to tell people, do not, this is my, one of my biggest pet feats, when you take your mask off your face, your mask should stay on your face at all times. It's the most important piece of gear and it should stay on your face until you're out of the water. 
Do not put your mask on your forehead like that. That, to a scuba diving instructor, tells me you're uncomfortable. So what you need to do is either put it around, keep it on your face or put it around your neck, but don't put it on top of your head because if a wave comes, remember I said at the very beginning, it's your most important piece of gear. So if it's on your forehead and then a wave comes and takes your most important piece of gear away, um, that's a bad thing. So um, make sure you start really getting used to it. I used to, I tell, especially women, because women are, are nose breathers, so they have a little bit of harder time than, than men um, to train sometimes. Put your mask on your face and walk around your house so you used, start used to breathing in and out your mouth. That's always a, a good tip for someone who's new. And on top of that, when you put your mask on your forehead, you're going to get the oils and any sunscreen that was on your head into your mask, causing it to fog. Consistently, we see people who their mask always fogs are always the people who take their mask off the most. If I know I'm going to be training for a whole day or diving for multiple dives, it's rare that I will take off my mask. Okay. That's cool. Well, Kathy, J Jonah, thank you so much for sharing your expertise with us. And uh, anyone, if you have questions, don't hesitate to email us at marketing at cscout.org and we will uh, do our best to answer any questions. Uh, Does that mean, Josh, on, next time, our next one's going to be me taking you scuba diving? Uh, yes, I, I should get my uh, <laughs> mask out of storage and uh, uh, go practice how to do that since it's been a few years. So yes, I'd okay. love to go do that. You always um, want to come to Havasu, so let's go. Sounds like a plan. So everyone, thank you so much. And oh, uh, we will uh, have another webinar on the 15th on Rules of the Road. We have our Coast Guard Auxiliary uh, webinar on celestial navigation on the 23rd. And on the 29th, we have ground tackle. So stay tuned for more. And appreciate everyone tuning in and uh, Kathy and Jonah and Peter Sargent. Thank you for uh, helping this evening make this webinar a success. Thank you all.